<laughs> For a long time, this EG200 was my fastest quadcopter. One reason it's fast is because it is a very light frame. This thing, it weighs almost nothing. The only problem is, since it weighs nothing, the arms weren't designed real well, and so they tended to break, and actually these are all new arms and I've broken four of them. And right here, the frame is starting to mess up to where you can see when this moves, it's actually part of the frame is now missing because it got ripped up. Anyway, this is an awesome quadcopter though, but it flies real great. It has 1806 motors and uh, 5045 props, and I really like it. And I think one reason it's fast is because I have this camera angled so much. Anyway, because this frame is pretty much done, I got this new frame. It's a Leesum LS210. And I think this one actually is supposed to look a lot like the uh, Sharpu edition. So I'm gonna take a look at this frame. And hopefully this frame will live up to the other one's standards, which I'm not real confident on that, but I am confident that this is going to be a good frame to replace this ET200 frame. So this is what comes in it, and I'm looking at this for the first time, uh, so we'll see if I can figure out how to open this. I guess we just open it right here. There we go. Uh, like I said, this is the LS210. There's also a 180 version of this, of this frame available, but I wanted to be able to run 5-inch props, so I got the 210. I think the 180 can only run 4-inch props. I may be wrong, but I, I don't think I am. Uh, looks like it comes with a set of propellers, and these are 545 bullnose props. There we go. <laughs> All right, and then we have, looks like a couple of plates here, and I think these are the plates that go on the side of the camera, and then the camera mount itself, the top plate here, uh, and this is the main plate, and it doesn't look quite as bad as it did in the in the pictures. Like it, like the hole's not too big down here, like I thought it would be. Uh, it comes with a uh, power distribution board here. Looks like it has the five volt output and uh, twelve volt output and a switch. Kind of interesting. Has a set of screws and uh, silver spacers. Nice, and some little rubber. Uh, covers to go on for the legs probably and some nylon nuts. I'm gonna go ahead and get this put together. So here it is fully assembled and it has like I said these two little plates that go up here on the side and they're to either help you hold a camera, a mini size camera in here or you can use this inside plate which is already at a pretty good angle probably about what's that 30 degrees or so uh, maybe a little bit maybe yeah, about 30 degrees and you can use that instead. Now like uh, you're not gonna fit a full size um, PZ 0420 in there there's not enough space but it's going to fit a lot of the mini uh, cameras that are available like a lot of the CMOS cameras and it has uh, these little it comes with these little spacers here the little nylon spacers to mount your um, uh, power distribution board like this that came with it and this would go in there and then you'd have another set of spacers and then have your NASA 32 or your CC3D up on top now this this thing here is pretty neat like I said it comes with a uh, 12 volt output and a 5 volt output and a switch up here which I would assume is to turn on and off these LEDs since you can kind of see that little trace running between the switch and the positive there. So anyway let me get this thing weighed and measured out. So the weight on the frame along with the power distribution board is 106.9 grams. The power distribution board alone is 5.9 grams. So we'll go ahead and get some measurements on how thick these plates are. This bottom plate is three millimeters. The top plate here is 1.5 millimeters. It has these little rubber feet, but these I know are going to slide off pretty easily unless you get them glued on. Uh, I like the, the layout of this frame, and if this is a lot like the Sharpoo one, which I assume it, a lot of it is, it should be pretty awesome. It has a uh, mounting place here for your FPV um, video transmitter and this is where you would run your wire up up through here but if you're going to do that you're going to need a rubber grommet to put in there because you don't want this carbon fiber eating up your power wires if we compare the size of the ET200 to the size of this one this is a this says it's a little bit wider here and let's check the back the front to back it's a little bit longer the frame itself is a little bit longer than the ET200. Now if we check uh, cross to cross, they should be about the same. Uh, cross arm to cross arm, and they are. They're, that's why this is, well this is an ET200 and this is a 210. So 
We'll see how long this actually you is. You have to use a camera similar to this where it's a little bit smaller than a full size camera because like here's this camera and this would be real nice if you could use this because of these side mounts here and they could you know mount them through this hole. But this itself is just as big as this uh, camera. Now you might be able to pull the sides off and just use the middle mount and maybe mount a full size camera inside there. Looks like you could. You might you, know, you wouldn't be able to keep it in this case. But you might be able to fit a full size one in there. It looks like it might be angled a little bit too much down here at the bottom and might actually bump into the uh, lower plate. But it might be possible. Maybe I'll try that when I go to build this. Um, but let's see. Here's the, I got a ruler to measure how big this actually is because there's always c confusion about how big the quadcopter really is. So there I got it kind of zeroed near the center. And up here, I got it, and it measured out about 220. So this is really like a, a 220 size frame, probably. Let me see if I can squeeze it a little bit. Kind of shim it over here on this side a little bit and see how close I can get it. I think that's pretty close. But yeah, it looks more like about a, a two, 219 almost a 220 so I guess you'd call it a, a couple of the weaknesses I see in this frame is that these uh, screws that it comes with are uh, you know extremely short and I just put Loctite on this uh, so you don't have that much screw hanging out to hold on to these um, pegs and the same thing is true up here for these other ones you know the, if you have some longer screws you'd probably be better off using those just so they get down in here a little bit more on the ET200 when I'd crash hard those those uh, screw this thing would bend you know put a lot of force on here and bend it and it would strip these uh, spacers out of those screws when I took the screws out and I put longer ones in it quit doing that that was kind of a kind of a bummer thing and I don't know why they didn't put a little bit longer ones in here it really would have helped uh, another th kind of weakness this thing might have is these giant holes down here in the bottom I mean even this one here under the CC3D or the NASA 32 is bigger and wider than these other ones they made these ones a little bit more small because of these holes here on the sides probably right there but uh, I don't know why they made this one so big it seems like this will be kind of a weak point here in the middle but I don't know if it's gonna break or matter much in the long run because you do have both sides together and I've very rarely I've ever seen anything break in here it usually breaks up along here or somewhere out here maybe where this screw hole is that you know already starts a weak point in the arm maybe but it's, it is three millimeter and these arms are pretty thick so I don't know and look you can also see it's kind of thin right here where they got that where they got this hole cut in there I don't know why they'd have that hole back here but it does create a little bit of a weak point back here for this arm and same thing for this arm maybe they did it to ma match these kind of these little holes up here for the mounts but those are real small and these are big so yeah I don't know either way it's the frame is like thirty dollars or or whatever it was and so it's just a replacement from other one which uh, was did not last very long in terms of how long I think it should have lasted it does have these uh, arms out here to where you can mount 1806 motors in these little thin parts or you can put up 2206 motors out here in these other ones so here's a five inch propeller installed on an 1806 motor and you can see it is just barely clearing this uh, post. I don't think it's close enough you're going to have any problems. It's just really close. One more thing I wanted to measure was the distance between these two upper plates, which looks like it comes out about 35 millimeters. So if you're planning a build, you got 35 millimeters inside here. And I think that you could put your, uh, your, um, uh, video transmitter back here to where you could actually read it through this upper plate and be able to change the frequencies if you got a push button or if you got the LEDs you can make it so you could see it through here that would be very convenient for uh, racing or flying with other people anyway I'm going to be taking all the parts off of this one the 1806 motors 5045 props CC3D camera I think this is using the SN20 amp ESC's and I'm going to be moving them all over to this one and getting this one flying hopefully I can get this flying within a week or so if you want to see it fly go ahead and hit the subscribe button and if you have any questions Questions, leave in the comments and as always thanks for watching this is just a sneak peek of the upcoming build video for the LS 210